Hello Grade 11s and welcome back to another video, another vector video. In this video I'm going to quickly remind you how to calculate vectors in one dimension and then we're going to move on to the dreaded vectors in two dimensions. I'm going to explain some stuff, then we're going to practice and then at the end or towards the end I'm going to be giving you some useful teacher tips that can help you get full marks. You don't want to miss that. Let's jump right in. In this video we will focus on doing vectors in two dimensions where I use Pythagoras and I'm going to use trig, namely tan theta, to help me find the direction. But before we move on to vectors in two dimensions, I just quickly want to remind you about vectors in one dimension. Because if you can't do vectors in one dimension, you won't be able to do vectors in two dimensions. When you are dealing with vectors in general, in physics, you have to choose positive directions. So over here, when dealing with vectors in one dimension, we're going to determine our positive direction, so up and right are positive, or to the left is positive, or whatever you decide. Then you're going to write out your vector sum equation. Now note how I write over here, I said vector sum equation. The word sum means plus. So we're first going to write all of our vectors with plus signs in between. Then we're going to substitute the values with the correct sign. So say for example we take the right as positive, if my vector is going to the right, I will substitute that value in with a positive sign. Okay, but if my vector is going to the left, I will substitute that in with a negative sign because left will be my negative direction. And then we'll work it out and write our answer with a unit and a direction. So here's a very basic example. Determine the resultant vector for the following. So we've got F1, 75 Newton to the left, and F2, 150 Newton to the right. I chose my direction is positive as being to the right. I indicated it at the top of my page. To the right is positive. Then step two, I wrote out my vector sum. Do you see I wrote F1 plus F2. I put a plus sign in between initially. Okay, that's important. Then when I substitute the values in, so these are the values, the magnitudes, then I substitute it in or fill it in with the correct sign. So because I chose the right as positive and F1 is going to the left, I wrote it as negative 75 plus 150. It's a positive because it's going to the right. And I get a positive answer, 75 newtons. And because my answer is positive, you see the sign of E is positive. That means that it's going to the right. And you must include a direction or you don't get your answer mark. Okay, so again, here are the steps. So with that being said, let's do one more example, then we'll move on to vectors in two dimensions. So you can pause the screen, read the example, try it yourself, but I've already done it, so I'll go through it with you. I've got, I push a box with a force of 20 Newton to the right. My friend Amy is helping me push the same box in the same direction with 10 Newton to the right. So we're both pushing to the right, 20 Newton, 10 Newton. And then we have a friend, Kate, that's pushing the same box, but in the opposite direction with the force of 20 Newton to the left. And I ask for the resultant force. So choose your... First, choose your positive direction, so I chose to the right, F1 plus F2 plus F3, see we start out with plus signs in between, because it's a vector sum, and sum means plus. Then we substitute in with the correct sign, so positive 20 and a positive 10, because we're pushing to the right, plus a negative 25. At this point you don't have to say plus minus 25, you can just say minus 25. Overall, we get 5 Newton, and because it's a positive, it means that overall, the net force, the resultant force, is to the right. If my answer was negative 5, let's pretend my answer was negative 5, then you would rewrite your answer as 5 Newtons, but what does the negative mean? It means in the opposite direction, so it would, would, it would mean left, but that's not the case in this example. Okay, now, moving on to vectors in two dimensions. Now, one dimension is either left, right, along the x, okay, that's one dimension. Or another example of vectors in one dimension would be vectors that go up or down, one dimension. But vectors in two dimensions involve up, down, so along the y-axis, and left, right, along the x-axis. So over here I say left, right, along the horizontal or, or x-plane, because remember the x-axis is like this, and then up, down, along the vertical or the y-plane or the y-axis. Right, so when we deal with vectors in two dimensions, we will have a diagram when we draw our head-to-tail diagram. It'll end up being a diagram that looks something like this. Can you see that this is my x vector or my horizontal? We've got my y vector or my vertical, and this green one over here is what we call the resultant or the net vector. 
the resultant or the net vector. You can see that it forms a 90 degree angle over here. And I hope you can see that this is a right angle triangle. And what do we do in right angle triangles in order to find out this magnitude of this arrow over here? We use Pythagoras. So you see here I said use Pythagoras and trig to find the resultant or net vector. We use Pythagoras to find the magnitude of the resultant vector. I'm going to say F net or F resultant. And it doesn't have to be F. It doesn't have to be force. It can be any vector. And we use tan to find the angle. Now, you might be thinking tan theta. Theta is just a word that I'm using for the angle. You don't have to use theta. You can use anything. You can use tan alpha. You can use tan x. But this is just representing the angle. And the angle, I will mention this again, but the angle in this triangle that we are trying to find is over here. And how do I know it's over there? I remember that the angle, I'm going to call it theta, okay, just to keep it simple. Theta goes in the corner of the right angle triangle where there are no arrowheads. So do you see over here, there's no arrowheads. That's where I put theta. So we're going to use tan theta. We're going to use trig to find the size of this angle. And that will help us find the direction of this green arrow over here. Okay, so basically everything I said over here, I wrote it out. How do we calculate the net vector? For vectors in two dimensions so we're first going to draw our head to tail vector diagram our vector diagram so i say draw each vector as an arrow connect them head to tail and draw the resultant vector now notice how i write resultant vector here in green and i also highlighted the resultant vector as a green arrow this is the resultant vector i'm going to write here resultant so you draw your other vectors head to tail if you need a recap on head to tail diagrams. I do have a video on that. I'll link it down below. Head to tail, and then you draw the resultant going from the tail of the first, pointing towards the head of the last. This resultant vector, we're going to find the magnitude of this, in other words, the size of this, using Pythagoras, as I mentioned. Then we put theta in the corner where there's no arrowheads. We're going to find the size of theta to get us the direction of this resultant vector. We're going to use tan. Okay. So I have steps for you guys. Hopefully this makes it easier. So your first step is make sure you have the net vector in the horizontal direction. That would be the red arrow in this case, the X direction. That's my net vector in the X direction. Then make sure you have the net vector in the Y direction. That will be this purple one over here. So this would be X. This would be Y. Then you draw your head to tail diagram, just as I've shown you, you draw in your resultant. You use Pythagoras to find the resultant, you use tan theta to work out the angle, and then we write our angle with magnitude, which we get from Pythagoras, the angle that we get from step six, tan theta, and direction, where we use the Cartesian plane to work it out. I've done a video as well on finding the direction of a net vector, also linked down below if you need to watch that video. Now, we're going to focus on some examples. I'm starting off with level easy. So we'll do level easy, which you need to know how to do, obviously, before moving on to a more difficult example. So in this video, we're going to focus on level easy. Our first one, example number one, says I push a box with 10 newtons to the right. My friend pushes the same box with five newtons downwards. I know that sounds confusing, but it is possible. So you have a box. I'm pushing it this way. So that would be 10 Newton. And my friend is pushing it this way. That would be 5 Newton. And overall, we want to know how will this box move? How will it move? Well, it makes sense that if I'm pushing it to the right with 10 Newton, my friend's pushing it down with 5 Newton. And overall, my box will move something like this down and to the right. I hope that makes sense. Down and to the right. This will be my resultant. But obviously you need to draw me a proper vector diagram in order to help with this question. So what I mean by that is let's draw it properly. I push a box with 10 Newton to the right. That's like that. 10 Newton. My friend pushes the same box with 5 Newtons down. Now remember, if you watch the video on head to tail diagrams, you will know how to do this correctly. You do not draw the 5 Newton down arrow over here. That is incorrect because that's tail to tail. It can't be tail to tail. It must be head to tail. So your five Newton arrow must go like that. Head of the 10 Newton touching the tail of the five Newton. 
Now, so far, what I have is 10 Newton represents my X or my horizontal okay, vector. The 5 Newton represents my Y or my vertical. Now, how do you work out the net? You draw an arrow that starts from the tail of the first pointing towards the head of the last. And that arrow makes sense. Remember we said that it'll go more or less that way. Okay. You put a 90 degree angle over here. The X and the Y. Just think of an X and a Y axis. They meet at 90 degrees. And where does tan theta go? I hope you remember where theta goes. Theta goes in the corner without any arrowheads over here. So if we go back to our steps, we have the net vector in the horizontal direction. It was 10 Newton. Done. We have the net vector in the vertical direction. It was 5 Newtons. We drew our diagram. We put in our theta. Step 4 says use Pythagoras to find the magnitude of the resultant vector. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use Pythagoras to find this. Let's call it big R. Okay, so we're going to do Pythagoras. We're going to go R squared is equal to, if we're looking for the hypotenuse, it's going to be 10 squared plus 5 squared. Let's write Pythagoras. Always write your reasons. I know it's not maths, but we do maths in physics, so you need to do it properly. So we do Pythagoras. We square root both sides. 10 squared plus 5 squared. You get 5 square root 5. And in science, this is the magnitude. And this counts as our final answer for magnitude. So we can write it as a decimal and round it off to two, at least two decimal places. So it's 11,18 Newton. So this is 10 Newton to the right, 5 Newton down. This R over here, we found out by using Pythagoras that this R has a magnitude of 11,18 Newton. But they want the net force. So when we write the answer to net force, remember, net force, force is a vector. Vectors, when you write the answer, you need a magnitude. The magnitude is 11,18 Newtons. But you also need a direction. Your direction is not to the right. It's not down. It's not down and to the right. You need to be more specific. We need to work out what this angle is. And not just that, we need to state the direction correctly according to our north, east, south, west, according to our compass points, or relative to the x-axis. So I've done examples of both of these in another video. Again, I've linked that in the description box, so go check that out if you need to. But first things first, we need to find the angle. So let's go back to our steps. We've done Pythagoras. So step four, we've done Pythagoras to find the magnitude of the corner angle. We put theta in the corner over here. We've done that. We've done number five. Now we're going to do number six. Use tan theta to work out the angle. So let's go back. So I'm going to go tan theta equals. Now you should know because you know trigonometry from grade 10. Tan is equal to opposite over adjacent. So what that means is you, lo you locate your angle, you locate theta, which has to be in the corner where there's no arrowheads. Opposite theta is 5 Newton. So we're going to go 5. Adjacent to theta is 10 Newtons. So tan theta equals 5 over 10, or tan theta equals a half. Just as a reminder, when you are finding an angle, you press shift on your calculator. So shift tan 5 over 10, or shift tan a half. Okay, so shift tan, why shift? Because we're looking for an angle. Shift tan 5 over 10. You press equals, and I get for theta 26 comma five six five zero five blah 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 degrees we can round that off to two decimals so it's 26 comma five seven degrees we are still not finished because this 26 comma five seven degrees doesn't tell me exactly which way my resultant vector is pointing it could be 26 comma five seven degrees from the north it could be between the south and the east. It could be between the south and the west. So you need to tell me exactly the correct direction. So let me show you how to do that. Okay, I've just erased my Pythagoras part of the sum, but it's fine. You guys have it down in your book. And we have our answer for Pythagoras over here. That's our magnitude. At the moment, we're trying to find our direction. So we've got our angle. That's cool. 
But now where is that angle on my Cartesian plane or according to my compass? Let me draw my compass a bit, bit bigger. North, east, south, west. Look at which way your arrow is pointing. It's pointing down and it's pointing to the right. So this is how I like to think of it. This resultant arrow, let's highlight it in green. This resultant arrow is not pointing upwards. It's not pointing up, it's pointing down, which means if it's pointing down, it won't be in these quadrants over here because those top two quadrants would be if it's pointing upwards. So it's either gonna be over here or it's gonna be over here. Now, which way is this arrow pointing? Is it pointing this way? Is it pointing that way to the left? Or is it pointing the opposite way to the right? It's pointing to the right. So this would be, if it's pointing to the left, our arrow is over here, our resultant. Right, now, where is my theta? Is my theta over here? Is it below the line? Or is it over here? Is it above the line? Look at where it is. Here's my green arrow. So here I've redrawn my green arrow. Theta is over here. It's sitting above the arrow. It's over there. Cool. So this angle we just worked out using tan theta is 26,57 degrees. So just like we did in the video where we did vector directions, there's two ways to state the direction of this vector. So I'm going to give you both options. Number one, we can say the vector is 11,18 newtons. That's the magnitude. We got that from Pythagoras. I'm just going to write Pythagoras. 11,18 newtons, 26,57 degrees clockwise relative to the positive x-axis, relative to the positive x-axis. And just to remind you guys about that, if you didn't watch the other video, here's the positive x-axis. That vector is 26,57 degrees clockwise relative or compared to the positive x-axis. This stuff isn't easy. Directions is not easy. So if you need help, go watch the video on directions. I promise you it will help you. Number two, if they don't want you to state direction relative to the positive x-axis, if they want you to use your compass points, then you would say the direction is as follows. You would say your answer is F net is 11,18 newtons, 26,57 degrees, and then you would say south of east. I hope you got that right if you did it with me. South of east. Now, why south of east? Look at where the the theta is, we're in the quadrant here between south and east. Okay, so that excludes the north, the west, it's between the south and the east. But the argument comes in, why is it south of east and not east of south? The order matters. It's because this green line is opening up towards the south of east. So it's going to the south of east. Think about it. If you had to make this angle bigger, 26,57, if you had to make it 28 and 29 and 30, which way would that line go? Okay, it would go this way. It would go towards the south. So it's going south of east. I hope that helps. I really hope that helps. In the next video, I will do one more easy example and then we'll move on to more difficult examples.